Hey guys, I'm Eric, and welcome to State of Build. Today we're going to be building and installing the electronics and the blade for this hill. I'm going to take you through the process step by step, so if you're interested, stay tuned. We are going to be taking this hill, this blade, and these electronics, and by the end of the video, we will have a fully functioning lightsaber. If you haven't seen the tutorials to build this hilt and this blade, go check that out first. The electronics we will be installing include the soundboard, a speaker, a button, and an 18650 battery. The soundboard I'm gonna be using today was designed and developed by me. It's designed to run off a 18650 battery, and it has a buck boost regulator built into it, so there's a constant output for the LEDs. There are multiple soundboards available for purchase that will do the same thing, like the Crystal Focus or the Pico Crumble. The other materials you're gonna need for this install are 22 to 24 gauge wire, JST connectors if you wanna make things a little bit easier for install and removal. I'm gonna be using these pre-installed connectors I got from the Custom Saber Shop. These are by far the cheapest that I've found unless you buy in bulk elsewhere. You're also gonna need a fine tip soldering iron and solder. You're also gonna need a five minute clear epoxy, various sizes of shrink wrap for those wires, some sandpaper, wire cutters and strippers, and then all the other materials we've already talked about. The speaker is gonna mount in the pommel and to hold it in place, I cut out this little ring that the speaker's gonna sit on. We're gonna glue that in place and this ring fits nicely inside, inside the pommel here, so that way we can remove the speaker and we don't physically glue it in place in here. So I'm gonna be using the five minute epoxy to glue that in now. that dries we can cut the lengths of wire for the speaker so with everything sitting roughly about like this and the pommel connecting there if the speaker is here then we're going to be measuring this wire I want the connector to stick out the bottom the connections for my speaker are right here on the bottom of the soundboard usually on the soundboard there's markings that indicate where the speaker is but always make sure you cross reference your your soundboard manual to double check so if that's about yay long, then I want my wires to be about this long. I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra just in case. And we're gonna cut right there. Next, we're gonna strip the wires and then solder them in place. So I have two types of strippers here. I use my cutters most of the time because these strippers don't go all the way down to 24 gauge, so they don't work very well. Um, but you can use anything, scissors will even work. So I'm gonna be using the white wire for the plus of the speaker. Uh, the orientation does matter. So when you're soldering, the key to soldering is to touch both the hole and the wire at the same time with the soldering iron and then add solder to it. You want both of those materials to be hot so that the solder, solder will stick to both. You want your soldering iron to be around 750 degrees Fahrenheit, 400 degrees Celsius. If the solder isn't melting when you touch, the, touch it with the iron, then it's not hot enough. And if it's, you can tell it's too hot if it starts to actually burn the board. Now we will solder the rest of the wires to the soundboard using the same method. I have here the wires for the battery, the button, and the LEDs. This connector that I'm going to be using for the LEDs came with my LEDs. So the mate to this is actually on the strand, which is already inside the blade. Um, there are other ways of installing your blade and hooking up the LEDs. This way is the cheapest because it's usually free. It comes with the LEDs. There are other methods like 
the PCB pixel con connector that they sell on the custom saber shop, it definitely makes it a lot easier to remove and add the blade because you don't have to disconnect anything. But this is the most robust connection. That PCB connector, when you start banging it around, it'll come loose. When you have spring-loaded contacts, over time they start losing their, um, their conductivity. They start getting resistance between the pins. This way is robust. The connector actually locks into the other side. So it's, this is a lot safer, a lot cheaper, and in my opinion, a lot better. So now let's solder on these wires to the board. Again, double check your specific soundboard manual to find the locations where you install the wires. In my case, I'm installing them, the battery down here, the LEDs up here, and then the button over here. The orientation on everything matters except the button. The button, it doesn't matter if you have plus or minus, but the battery definitely does and the LEDs have specific orientation as well. I'm going to be installing plus on the red and white wires in this case. If your soundboard requires two buttons, make sure you keep note which is which. I'm only installing one button, obviously, but some soundboards you need a power switch button and an auxiliary button as well. quick thing to note about my soundboard is I have a direct current drive already built into the board so for these LEDs a lot of other soundboards will require a boost converter to get a constant 5 volt output from your battery they might also require a resistor to get a constant voltage out from the battery in this case I'm hooking mine straight up to the soundboard because I have that already installed on the board so just make sure you read through your manual to make sure that you're installing the extra components that you might need most of all the components that you'll need you can get from the custom saber shop other ones you can buy just online from regular stores next we're going to be working on the battery if your battery didn't come with a sleeve and wires already coming off of it you're going to need a holder for it this is because you can't solder anything directly to the battery even though solder will stick to this you should no way ever try and solder something directly to a lithium ion battery it can overheat explode release toxic chemicals it's extremely dangerous so you 100% will need a holder. So I have this holder here. I have the two wires sticking out of it. The battery fits in here nicely. And I've cut out this connector, which we're gonna splice together to this. This connector is the opposite to my battery connector here. So these will plug in together like this. So what we're gonna do is pre-tin these, these wires so that there's plenty of solder on there. We're gonna connect them together. But before we do that, we're gonna install this shrink wrap around here because we're gonna have to protect the wires after we solder it. Because if for any, if any reason you leave these uh, exposed, they can touch, short out the battery, and then that can also cause the batteries to overheat, explode, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, I'm gonna be installing red as plus, the same way I installed red on the soundboard, and then black for my. One quick note, if you're installing a kill switch or a kill switch key on your Sabre, you're gonna be wanting to install it in line with this red wire. That way, not both of these wires, just this one red wire. This is the plus for the battery, so when the kill switch is enabled, then the battery voltage is cut off completely. 
So the shrink wrap will melt when exposed to heat. It's recommended to use a heat gun to, uh, to warm this up to shrink it on the wire, but I don't have one. So what I do is I just use my soldering iron and I just use the heat radiating from that to kind of tap it lightly and just get it warm enough without actually melting a hole through it to, to heat it up. So I use it very, very lightly like so. And as you can kind of tell, it's starting to shrink a little bit already. So I just keep doing that. Don't hold it in one spot for too long. Otherwise it will actually melt all the way through. Like so. One thing that I had to do for my battery holder to get it fit into the hilt was to sand the bottom corners a little bit. You can kind of see how that's rounded there. This battery holder was actually too big to fit in the end of the saber. So I just took that 120 grit sandpaper, rounded off the bottom corners, not enough to actually go through. As you can see, nothing has gone through. So that way it would fit nice, nice and tight. So it's now a snug fit in here. I can get it in and out easily, but it doesn't wobble around hardly at all. The next thing we were gonna do is install the wires for the button and then also s install the wires for the button LED. There's an LED ring in this button. I'm not gonna use a JST connector for this because I'm not gonna be adding or removing the button often enough. I am gonna use it for the actual button uh, function so that way I can test it externally. But as for the LED, I'm just gonna solder this directly. So first I'm gonna install that, and solder that onto the soundboard and then I'm gonna solder this onto the button. Next we're going to be installing the wire onto the speaker. If you recall, I used the white wire for the plus side of the speaker, so I'm going to do that on the same side here. The speaker should be labeled somewhere on the plastic or on the metal, so I'm going to be installing that now. Next thing we're going to do is optional but highly recommended. I have this extra large shrink wrap that I'm going to cover the soundboard with. This is to protect it from shorts and handling from the inside of the hill and also on the outside of the hill. It also makes the fitment in the hill just a little bit tighter so that way it has less opportunity to rattle around. So that was the last of the prep work we needed to do. Now we can connect it all together. If you have extra components like other LEDs, switches, kill switches, that you need to install all these basic guidelines and steps that we just went over so before we install everything into the hill let's connect everything externally and verify everything is functioning correctly Check your specific soundboard manual to make sure you have the correct SD card, sound fonts installed into your soundboard. Some come with everything you need, others don't. In this case, I have my SD card installed with everything I need on it. You will learn from the manual how to turn on the saber. In my case, I'm just going to hold the button for one second. Once on, check all the functions, verify they're working. The blade is lit up, the sound is working, the button and button LED are working. 
and then we'll check the other colors as well. Seems like everything is working. The blade turns on, the LED button indicator is working correctly, the sound is turning on, and if I scroll through all the colors, it seems to be correct as well. If anything is not working, after you test this out, double check all the connections, double check the orientation of the wires, and the locations on the soundboard. Now that we have properly tested this, let's install everything into the hill. As you could probably tell from the video, the button was the trickiest part. The way that I got it on was I held the, the saber upside down and then laid the washer on or the bolt on top of the button and then used gravity along with a flathead screwdriver to tighten it down slowly. Once everything's installed, then we can check the functions again. So sound is working, this LED's lit up, the blade's lit up, I can scroll through the colors again. I also have some strike features on this so I can test that by shaking the hilt violently. And that seems to be working as well. Switch over to red. And then power off. Seems like everything is working correctly. So guys, that's all for the electronics install today. If you haven't seen how I made this hilt, go check that out next. If you haven't seen how I made this blade, also go check that out. If you really like this video, leave a comment and consider subscribing. And as always guys, thanks for watching.